Uh, welcome to everyone to the inaugural Logan Symposium in London, entitled Building an Alliance Against Secrecy, Surveillance, and Censorship. My name is Richard Logan. I'm one of the directors of the Reba and David Logan Foundation. And our foundation has a long and strong commitment to the principles of press freedom and the preservation of individual rights. It is a great honor for us uh, to sponsor this symposium, uh, a gathering of like-minded and courageous people, individuals, uh, both journalists and activists who are here, who every day put their livelihoods and sometimes their very lives on the line. And for what? Uh, to discover the truth, to expose the lies, and to get their findings into the public domain. It isn't getting easier to do the work. Uh, our rights, and even the laws, are being disregarded by giant corporations and by our own governments. The public has learned uh, to distrust the faceless entities. Yet surprisingly, even with the host of recent revelations, there hasn't been a groundswell in demand for change, simply more apathy and fatalism among the public at large, a tragedy. I, like you, am optimistic that it's not too late to reverse the trend. And that's why we're here, to ask a thousand questions, to learn the latest techniques, and together, search for the best ways forward. We need to change our societies to ensure the rights of individuals are preserved and respected. <clears throat> a brief reading of history, even recent history, uh, should be enough of a warning. But who knows? Hopefully, this symposium will be a platform for debate and a vehicle for some of that very much needed change. So without further delay, I'd like to introduce you to the young man who is really responsible uh, for this stellar program uh, that follows over the next three days. Uh, his blurb on the website uh, doesn't really do him justice, uh, nor will I for that matter, except to say that he is exceptionally modest, uh, an actor, a producer, a journalist with an unwavering commitment to the highest standards of journalism and ideals of freedom and justice, a teacher, a man who is known to consume curries that are so hot as to be banned by international treaties. <laughs> he is both a serious troublemaker uh, and my friend, uh, the leader of the Center of Investigative Journalism and your host, Gavin McKay. figure out what to say after that. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, it's a great pleasure to welcome everyone here. And uh, it's an extraordinary assemblage of people. And there are, as many of you will know, three distinct groups here. Uh, and we're hoping that given the purpose and the fundament of this meeting, that those three will actually function uh, together in interesting and unexpected ways. The three groups, of course, are a whole groups of investigative reporters and, and some regular, ordinary reporters who are very welcome, uh, hackers of all kinds from a number of countries, and their friends and, and supporters and sponsors. I hope you'll all meet and get to know some of the other that you are with, because this is the base reason for this whole affair, is that given the extraordinary dilemmas confronting journalists and hackers both, there's a natural community of interest between all of them. And we're trying to, as a way to uh, fertilize as much as we can precisely that uh, combination of, of, of forces. I think for two reasons. One is because the attacks on journalists have increased. There are, as we'll learn in the, in the rest of the uh, symposium, 150 or so killed in the last immediate while in many places around the world. <clears throat> and a very large and growing number of hackers being imprisoned, some for astonishingly long sentences, which is particularly uh, horrific given the fact that some of them are even teenagers. And uh, the, the thing that brought them all together 
and to which this symposium is dedicated, is the notion that there is a free internet, that there is a free press, and there's a free speech. And we share all of those things together with all three groups. And I think nothing could be more admirable in a way and uh, uh, worthy of all of your uh, having come here and participated in it. <coughs> I'll just say a brief word that CIJ, that sponsoring the organization, was started about 12 years ago by TV journalists as a nonprofit, and is now one of the larger, if not the largest, training uh, institution for investigators in Europe. Uh, we're based at Goldsmiths at the University of London, and we do a lot of basic shoe weather skills, data journalism, FOIA, Freedom of Information Act, for those who don't know it, uh, covert recording, cross-border collaborations, libel business documents. We do a lot of training in those areas. But we've got two new things that we've decided to do, given <coughs> the change in temperature that partly justified this meeting. One of them is whistleblowers. Uh, we decided that whistleblowers were an endangered commodity. Uh, they were people who took enormous risks to tell the, the, the truth about things they saw in their workplace, but were not protected. And often the journalists, particularly younger journalists, don't <coughs> understand the critical necessity of protecting them as sources and protecting what they do, as well as their own work and their own reputations. So we, we uh, launched, in a way, uh, an initiative, which was to provide and build an organization of defense of whistleblowers, which is what we've done. And towards that end, we supply organizational capacity uh, psychological counselors, because a lot of the people are really damaged in the process of standing up, uh, and legal support, pro bono legal support. And we've raised money from a number of sources to do that, and it's two organizations now exist in Britain, largely as a result of our efforts, to help support these people and to encourage them to, to stand up. And towards that end, there's going to be some excellent conversation later this, these days about what goes on uh, <clears throat> in the whistleblowing community. Uh, the second thing we've done, which none of us have done before, is get involved uh, in information security, and to which is another <coughs> reason why these various groups have come together here for this event. We now train whole groups of journalists, and now increasingly we hope lawyers, to protect their sources, to protect uh, themselves and their stories. Nothing is now with not being observed. Everything, as you well know from the Snowden uh, discoveries, and, and the information that's actually been in the public domain for many years is that everything is being hoovered up. Everything. The only <coughs> restraint on action is so far their ability to process so much information. But, the, but that'll, that'll uh, given the fact that they've just hired 20,000 people, apparently, in this last while, that, even that will allow be being addressed by the NSA and GCHQ. So we now do training sessions all over Britain, trying to teach journalists and lawyers what they can do to protect themselves by altering their means of communication, by taking real cautions and, and, and cares. Um, towards that end, we were really influenced by some extraordinary things that we've seen. One of them is the CCC uh, in Germany, the Chaos Computer Club in Germany, which does a lot of this kind of trading, and is a very creative, open marketplace for free ideas about the internet and free ideas about the free press, and more importantly, about computer security, how to protect yourself and to protect your family and friends and most importantly, of course, your sources. And they are invaluable to us uh, in, in providing that an inspiration that enables us to go forward in that way. So we're very interested and, uh, in, in pursuing that very aggressively. And towards that end, we've commissioned a handbook which is available to anybody here, which is very, very recent. It's just been completed in the last weeks. Uh, so it's very up to date about how to protect yourself how to use tails, how to use Tor and encryption, and all the methods that you need to do and know about, at least some of them, to protect yourselves against the kind of invasive authoritarian uh, surveillance that is now totally commonplace. And to which, sadly, we have to say, so many journalists don't seem particularly aware, which is curiously disturbing, uh, given the fact that there's no doubt whatsoever, factually, that that's what's going on.